Uh, just relax. Your eyes are not deceiving you. I am not Alex Trebek. I know you're all very disappointed. As uh, Eric Brown said, my name is Todd Crane, and from November of 2009 to November of 2010, I hosted over 170 sparring matches, pitting Watson against X Jeopardy Tournament of Champions contestants to give the IBM scientists an idea of which categories Watson would excel in and which categories he would struggle in. We've got some good stories about those. Now, I've seen Watson grow uh, to become the competitive player that you will all see in a few minutes. Now, here is how our game is actually going to be different from what you will see on the broadcast show. We decided, and I think this is a very good idea, to give a few Lotus Sphere attendees a chance to compete against Watson before Ken Jennings and Brad Rutter do the same thing on the broadcast version of the show which is uh, February 14th through the 16th on Jeopardy, which Alex Trebek will be hosting. Now, we are going to have four Lotus Beer attendees play one full game of the show. Here's how we're going to break it down. We have two players that will play the single Jeopardy round, or for those of you that aren't familiar with Jeopardy, that's the first round of play. Single Jeopardy is the first round of play. So we have two players for that, and then we have two different players for our uh, double Jeopardy round, which is the second round of play. Then, for Final Jeopardy, all players will be uh, participating in uh, our Final Jeopardy round. And just so we're all clear, um, whatever money the people win, they're not taking home with them. This is just for fun. Yeah, they're not walking out of here with a big old fat check. Um, no, 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 that's, that's not going to happen. Um, uh, with that being said, however, let's go ahead and meet our contestants. Our first contestant is an independent Domino Administration consultant, and her name, please welcome, Cindy Tilbury. in a million years that our friend Sidney Tilbury is ranked 80th in the Amateur Racquetball Player Association of America. 80th ranked in America. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> now, how many years have you played? Have you played since you were in the womb? Approximately 30 years, yes. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yes, we're lying about our age. That's always fun. Um, <laughs> So, how do you become ranked 80? Is there there's one organization that goes around the country and just rates? Well, yes, 79, but you're 80. Like, there's, that's there's bad. One organization, and I play many, many tournaments, and uh, it all evens out. And it all evens out. Yes, I play a lot of national tournaments. You play a lot of national tournaments. Well, we're very glad to have you. Welcome. Thank you. Give Cindy a round of applause. <laughs> Our second what we like to call meatbag, or human contestant, <laughs> is, um, <laughs> I'm sure he would not be thrilled to be called a meatbag, <laughs> though I affectionately love that phrase. Uh, <laughs> Brown Brothers Harriman Vice President, Evangelist for Web Content Management, and also Lombardi, please welcome Steve Ezrati. Steve Ezrati. <laughs> You have a fun story about the event that everyone has attended, Lotus Sphere 2011. So share your favorite moment from that, please. My favorite moment happened actually early on at the barbecue. The one that happened before anything even started. Okay. Big barbecue, and I'm standing on the beach, and I'm standing behind these three guys. Yes. And they're looking at the stage. And on the stage, there is this DJ, and he's playing music, and there are these professional dancing girls. And they're looking at the stage, and like, Wow, I gotta get a better look at that, that's great! And they go running right past the stage. And they go looking at the Blackberry Playbook sign that's standing there. <laughs> only at Lotus Sphere. Only, yeah, only at Lotus Sphere. That wouldn't happen at the NFL convention. No, no that certainly would not. All right, let's go ahead and uh, kill the anticipation now. The person that we are all here, well, the, the reason I'm here, for that matter, is uh, in the middle podium. He is always in the middle podium, and I always refer to him as he, though I have gotten in trouble for that many, many times because of Terminator and Sw Arnold Schwarzenegger. But please put your hands together for the man of the hour, Watson! There he is. I love the camera close-up on Watson. Yeah, that was nice. 
nicely done, nicely done. So what you will see from Watson throughout the course of the game uh, are these uh, spindly things. They will react to Watson's speech pattern. Um, and uh, there are several ways that, that Watson will react. You'll see the colors change, the more confident he is in each response. You'll see the, uh, the globe actually disappear and just become the spinning orbs that you will see later. All right, let's go ahead and put up our game board and I'll explain what we're gonna see for those of you that may not be familiar with the game of Jeopardy. <clears throat> so this giant board right here is clearly our Jeopardy board. So the categories across the top, these are the categories that we will play. I'll get to those in a second with the numerical values. Obviously the $1,000 clue is much more difficult than the $200 clue. Moving over to your right, you'll see on the bottom box, we see Cindy and Liz. Since we are going to have two people playing essentially one game, uh, we're gonna team them up. So Cindy is our first player, Cindy is here. Liz is standing backstage and she will play our double jeopardy round. Watson will be the only person playing in the middle podium. And Steven and Franz, Franz is the other partner that Steven has uh, for his double jeopardy round. Above that box, you'll see the blue long box says Watson on it. That's the one that Dr. Brown talked about a little bit earlier with the uh, three um, top responses that Watson will come up with based on the information that he quickly sifts through for each correct response or what he thinks is each correct response for each clue that I read. Yes? Are we ready? <laughs> I love the smell of fear. Yes. <laughs> yeah. How many of you have seen promos for Watson on TV already? I can't see you applaud, sorry. <laughs> I can't see it's so dark right there. Awesome, so how many of you have actually heard something in the trades about Watson? A fair number of you. All right, so this will give you a good taste of what you might see on uh, February 14th through the 16th on uh, our Jeopardy program. Uh, Cindy, you're in our first position. You're gonna start us off. Let's take a go ahead and look at our categories, and these are what you're going to play for this single Jeopardy round. We start off with scene of the crime. Followed by tennis vocabulary, anyone? Laundry detergent, always in fashion, presidential rhyme time, and followed by those animals frighten me. All right? How do you feel about those categories, guys? <laughs> like deer in headlights, really. It's really, really something special, isn't it? All right. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get started. Cindy, you start us off. Go ahead and pick away. Tennis vocabulary, anyone? For 200. Please. 200, start at the top. Here we go. An aviator with five air kills. Cindy. What is ace? Ace is correct. It's an untouched serve. Nicely done. One more thing. If you know the answer, shut your mouths. We don't want to hear from you. Just a little FYI. All right, these are the players that are playing on stage. There's a reason they're standing up here, and you're all sitting down there. Yeah, okay. That's the clue. I want to hear you. All right, Cindy, good job. You got 200 bucks on the board. Go ahead and choose again. Tennis, anyone? Tennis vocabulary anyone for $400. 400 Here it is. A crack in the Earth's crust. Watson. What is it, Fault? Fault is correct. Nicely done. Okay, let's take a second here before we move on. Don't applaud him. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you see Fault, Fracture, and Volcanoes. So the possible answer to the question, a crack in the Earth's crust, Volcanoes, not really appropriate. Uh, Watson has come up with much worse, believe me. Uh, so he only had 12% confidence that Volcanoes was the correct answer. 17% uh, was Fracture, and he was only 62% uh, confident that, that uh, Fault was the actual correct response to that question. That actually was the correct response, and he took a stab because, as uh, Dr. Brown explained earlier, if his confidence is higher than the threshold, that white line, that uh, vertical line that you see there, he will ring in. So, there's a little explanation on that. Watson, you got it right. You got 400 bucks in your pocket. Go ahead and choose again, Watson. Scene of the crime for 200. Scene of the crime for two. On January 17th, 1950, robbers made off with $2.7 million from the Brinks Bank near this city's Charleston Bridge. Lit a city. What is Boston? Boston is the city. Nicely done. Good job. All right, go ahead, city. Tennis vocabulary, anyone for 600. Tennis it is for six. The retinue of a reigning monarch. Cindy. What is train? No. Watson or Stephen? Correct answer is, what is court? What is the court? Retinue of a reigning monarch. Kind of had it up there, 26%. Go ahead, Cindy. Ten is anyone? Uh, $800. $800. $800. An automobile race run over public roads. 
What's up? What is rally? Rally, that's exactly right. Tennis uh, term for back and forth. Nicely done, Watson. Good for 800. Choose again. Scene of the crowd for 400. JFK was shot, uh, uh, was shot as his motorcade passed through this outdoor plaza, the front door of Dallas. Sandy. What is Daly? Yes, Daly Plaza. Nicely done. Good for 400. Choose again. Tennis vocabulary for 1,000. End it out. Ambrose Pierce described this as a temporary insanity curable by marriage. Watson. What is love? Love, yes. <laughs> love. 98% sure on that answer. Yes. Here's the irony of that clue. Ambrose Pierce was married to 17, it was married for 17 years to Molly Day, so apparently he didn't know what the answer to love was. All right, Watson, you have control of the board and 2,200 bucks in your pocket. Go ahead. Scene of the crime for 600. One billion dollars was stolen from this city's central bank March 18, 2003, shortly before U.S. bombing began. Cindy. What is Baghdad? Baghdad is a city. Good, for six. Go ahead. Scene of the crime for 800, please. The final conviction in, uh, in the, the 1963 bombing of this city's 16th Street Baptist Church didn't come for nearly 40 years. Watson. What is Birmingham? That is correct. Birmingham, Alabama is the city we were looking for. Nicely done. You want to finish it off or move on, Watson? Let's finish scene of the crime. Let's. An assassin fired two shots into William McKinley at the 1901 Pan American Exposition in this city. Watson. What is Buffalo, New York? Buffalo, New York is the city. Nicely done, Watson. Good for a thousand dollars there. Steven, your buzzer worked okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just relax, just shake it off, shake it off. We'll get you a towel for your forehead if you need one. Watson, you have 400,000, 4,000 bucks, 400,000 bucks.